All right, well, so here's another project. What I have here is a early 90s Mackie CR1604 mixer. I had one of these back at that time. This was really a revolutionary product, at least it was for me, in that it had clean mic preamps in an affordable and compact format. I paired this with an ADAP machine and was able to do really high quality home recordings for the first time. If you had been recording on Porta Studios or other kinds of reel-to-reel -reel systems, even getting a clean preamp at a, an affordable price was almost impossible at that point. And then this product came out and it had, it had a total of uh, six mic preamps, which could be expanded, but it's a true 16 channel board with six nice quality mic preamps and it had direct out so you could hook to a multi-track and that's exactly how I used it. I didn't use this sort of machine much for live sound, though I may have done that a couple of times. It has a very limited master section, as you'll see here, but it's very flexible. It does have a lot of aux sends, and each channel has a three-band EQ, which was a very nice, high-quality EQ, which is one of the reasons that I really was thinking back about getting one of these and trying it with modern digital recording because I really like the workflow. If you'd hit mute, hitting mute mutes the channel, but it also would send the mute off to the Alt 3, 4, Out. And with a multi-track machine, you could basically hit mute anywhere on any of these channels and have all your stuff hooked up, your guitars, synths, you know, keyboards, your bass, vocalists, have that all hooked up, anything you wanted to record, you could just hit this button, it would send it essentially to a record bus. And with ADAT machines, that would allow you to send it to any stereo pair and then use pan. Well, I kind of missed that simple workflow and thought maybe it'd be fun to try that with a modern DAW and get back to one of these old boards. Also, people have started to realize these distort in a very nice way. This model was superseded with the VLZ version, but this is the original version. This is what I wanted to work with. Now, this uh, unit is the second one that I've gotten. You can see this one here, all the knobs are off. I bought this one for 50 bucks, and I have done some rehab on this. It's got bad faders, which I've marked here, and some I've had it all apart, I've cleaned all the faders, and this does function, except for these things here don't work right, that I've got marked in red. Also the solo channel doesn't work right because the one side of it doesn't work, so the solo bus is not coming through in stereo, and I have not uh, diagnosed that. The interesting thing though is that I've got two of these units that have problems but have interesting features you know it's sort of like if you're going to restore a car you might want to find two cars that have some of the qualities that you want of your final product and that's kind of what i've got here this is largely functional the faders have problems but this has the rotopod option which i haven't found it particularly easy the rotopod was a kit that came out that allowed you to rotate the jacks to the top, which in a home recording studio situation allows you to plug everything in to this kind of like you would a patch bay without having it come out the back. And I just like this setup when I'm working in, um, in, in my setup. If you're doing live sound, you might prefer it coming out the back because you just hook your snake up to the back. So this other one doesn't have the rotopod, but what it does have is rack ears. So if I can combine the better parts of these two, maybe I can come up with one working system. Now you can see this one here, I paid a little more for it. I'm not sure why this is uh, questionable. This is in worse condition. The reason I paid more is I wanted the rack ears, but you can see this one does not work, doesn't start. It, it's taken a blow here power jack has been damaged here so it doesn't come on but these in good condition will you know sell for somewhere around three hundred dollars 
but I just like the idea of also learning, taking it apart, learning how it works, see if I can bring some of this back to life and recycle this into a modern use. So that's the idea. I'm going to do some initial digging on this. I'll take this apart and see what's going on here to see if this is probably something that can be fixed well enough that I can get it to come on and see if the, how the mixer works. You can also see that this one has seen some serious action. There is something spilled on there. I'm guessing that looks like Coke or something that's extremely disgusting. It's on these faders. If that got down inside there, that may have affected these faders. I do have a full set of replacement faders. So if I figure out which of these two is the better one to start with, then I may go through and replace all the faders. This is not a problem. I can easily soak these knobs, clean them. I, I, I like the, on this one here, the knobs are a lighter gray where they're yellow here, almost like maybe this was in a, uh, you know, in a, a studio or a space where there was a lot of smoke, you know, a lot of cigarette smoke. And so we've got kind of a yellowing of these. That could be, you know, from various kinds of sunlight exposure. This one here, you know, I think the basic uh, button field looks to be a little bit better. Another thing I really like about these boards is that you could set the you could set the gain staging in a really clear way. I think that because the headroom wasn't the greatest on these, um, Greg Mackey, who designed this, came up with a scheme that allowed you to use the main fader to set the gain. And so the way you would do that is you'd put this at unity gain here, and then you put your fader at unity gain, solo it, try out your signal or have your vocalist or play the guitar or whatever, and, and then adjust the gain here until the mid-range here was coming right to the middle or right to zero. So you want to keep it under zero. Once you've done that gain staging, then you can move on to the next channel. And it's just a really clear, easy to use system for gain staging. Also, when you had solo, you'd have this innovation here, which was the Rude Solo Light, a really bright LED that would come on when you soloed it. So these are some of the things that I remember, kind of nostalgic about these um, Mackie Sears 1604 boards. So I'm gonna take this, uh, not this one, I've had this one apart. This one here I'm gonna take apart, the probably take this piece of it off uh, take a look around in here and see if there's some way I can get power to it safely. Then I'll power it up, hook up some speakers and just go through and just get an idea of what the general functionality of this uh, could be. As you saw in the time lapse, there's a lot of screws to get this thing apart. And ultimately, you take the pod off. This is the pod, which is actually the core of the mixer. I haven't totally analyzed that, but you can see that the, the area with the fade, all the faders on it, there's a big circuit board down in there. And then there's these ribbon cables that connect the pod up. So I think to analyze this further, I'm going to pull these off. So I'll try to set this camera down for a second and I'll pull these ribbon cables off, hopefully without uh, damaging them. Yeah, that comes right off. So that separates the pod. There's really only one way that can go together. So then let's see if we can take a look at the damage. Also look at the design. I've never had this apart quite this way before. You can see this looks like a power supply back in here. Clearly we've got our transformer here. Transformer is 
kind of nicely shielded. It's wrapped here in this little metal cage. It seems to be loose. Some of the screws that I removed from that, the, the, this um, cover panel, uh, apparently the transformer was screwed to that. It has some clips here. So it was actually when I was removing this, I was removing that support for the transformer. Never really knew that. Now, down in here is our damaged jack. And what I'm going to do is work on this a little more. I, I need to get the transformer and this cage out of here so I can get in behind here and see what's up with that to see if that can be, you know, how I can go about repairing that or getting that at least working well enough that I can put this back together and test the functionality of the board. So we'll uh, work on that next. Okay, so, well, it wasn't too hard to get further. The cage that covers the transformer is just something you just pull out. And therefore, since we had the support screws off, this just slides out and it's designed so that it can, you know, you can get it out of here. But the damage to this is such that the, the IEC jack it's actually pushed all the way through here and you can see that the switch this is what's left of it the plastic part of that switch is still back up in there this is just broken off from the switch I'm not sure if that popped off in such a way that it could be fixed but there's serious damage to the metal here so I'm going to have to think about this. I don't want to go in and rip this apart and try to straighten this or fix it back to stock. I might not ever do that because maybe I would just use this part off of the other board. But I do want to figure out a way to get power to this. So I'm going to think about this, come up with some way to jumper this, and then get the whole thing back together, even if it's just comes up powered on I mean it doesn't it looks like from what I'm seeing here I imagine that the board will come back up and work because we've got a very obvious problem here with the switch being broken so I'll think about that and then after I give it some thought I'll come up with some way to power this thing up okay so I have a general idea what I'm going to do here there's a few other things I want to point out so the idea is this is the primary to the transformer where line voltage comes in on the ground. I don't really trust any of this stuff and I cannot get this to stick into the panel, but I want to assemble this mixer and then test the functionality of the mixer. So what I'm going to do is hardwire a power cord in here and I'll switch it on using an outlet strip as a switch. That'll give me enough to test it. What I may wind up doing with this project is taking all of this apart, which has got a, a lot of, there's a lot of jacks on here. So that'll be a little bit of work to take all of that off, but I may separate this board here. I just have a feeling that this mixer may work better than the other one. I may use the circuitry from this one as the core and then use the chassis from the other one as the kind of way to build this thing back up. But we'll see, we'll see. I have to get this back together and test all the channels and all the functions to see if that is a good way to go. One other thing that is worth mentioning here is you may wonder what I'm doing with the screws and all this blue masking tape. This is to create basically a trail of breadcrumbs for myself, breadcrumb trail, when I put it back together. So I've labeled the left to the right and the left sides of this. I've got the screws 
And I drew a little square here to remind myself that those are the screws that go in the bracket. These, these are the screws that I've contained in some tape that go on the left side of this bracket and the right side. I have this, this cover plate, I've attached the screws to it in this. And same thing with the rack rails. Those rack rails are valuable in and of themselves. If this whole project falls apart, I could sell the rack rails and uh, they have some value. Same thing with the rotopod and some of the other parts. Nonetheless, I don't intend to do that. I intend to use those rack rails and when I'm ready to put them on, I don't want to be hunting for the screws. The screws here are of various lengths and sizes. So I just don't want to have to think about that when I put it back together, which might be today. It could be next month. I am anxious to get this back up and see what functionality you actually have from it. All right, so now I am back, and what I've done at this point is I removed the broken uh, piece, this IEC jack um, uh, that was completely loose. I removed that. What I did is I used the meter to make sure that I connected my power cord. So I, I took a loose power cord and I have soldered it directly to the transformer primary and to the ground. And I shrink wrapped this. I could have done twist ties or something. I just wanted to solder and connect this because just for safety's sake, I don't want this coming out during testing. You never know exactly how long it's gonna be in this sort of prototype state this is clearly not a proper fix if you don't understand this sort of the nature of electrical wiring or hook or how you connect a power cord i would not recommend doing this uh, on your own you want to find somebody who does know what they're doing now with the broken switch i want to get that out of there one so i can figure out what kind of switch it is to see if maybe i can get a replacement the other thing is i want to somehow strain relief this thing so I might um, see if I can get that out of there yeah it looks like I can just pry this there it's like pulling a tooth so I'm not sure if this is a part that can be purchased, but I will look that up. Clearly the one for, I think this is for phantom power here, appears to be the same thing and that's still working. So I might be able to look at that. Obviously this is, to get this straightened out, if we were to actually try to use this, would require probably hammering that out from the inside, in which case I'd have to remove all this stuff anyway. But for right now, what I'm gonna do is just take this cord here and zip tie it to that opening just to allow it, uh, leave a little loop of it back inside here. And so if I wind up tripping on it or something, I don't yank these wires out. So this is not the proper way to do this for a fix, but it is the way I'm gonna do it for testing this thing. All right, I think that'll hold up for the sake of this. So the next thing I'll do is put it back together and then when I've done that, we'll come back and I'll test it. We'll see if this thing actually uh, starts up. Okay, well we're back. I've got the mixer, this Mackie Sear 1604, all back together. We have now 
bypass the power switch which was broken and now I am going to test the functionality now I've not done any I have not powered this up I'm going to plug it in to power it up on camera I have not done that but I have gotten my test equipment out and you don't really need a lot for this you need just anything to put a signal into it it's more fun to put music into it but it's YouTube so I decided just to keep it simple and I'm using a function generator so we're going to put a 600 hertz square wave into it see if we can get something out now let's finish the setup here so I'm going to just turn these faders down and then I'm going to plug my old set of battery powered Radio Shack speakers which I use for this kind of testing uh, frequently it's just super handy to have some battery powered speakers and you can usually get these very cheap these days on eBay or Goodwill or something like that so I'm going to plug this into the back find the main out so we'll go into the left and right and since this is sort of a smoke test I like to use these battery powered speakers that aren't worth much and I'll set the camera down a second here plug this in and we have a rude solo light how exciting so something is soloed we can see channel 5 is soloed got a nice power button so I'm gonna come up with a way here to get my signal in so I'm gonna do that by unscrewing this and we'll connect the alligator clip up to the the red is going to the tip this is going to the sleeve and then I'm going to plug this in on channel one got channel one down turn the gain down and then as we turn this up oh, there's our overload light so I don't know if you can see this let me hold that so as I turn the gain up on the back you can see that I can get it to where the overload lights coming on I'm gonna set it to where that is just off I'm gonna try the feature here where I solo that and we can see we've got signal there let's just turn up the main there's our signal we've got signal on the right or left let me uh, pan this panning sends it only here fader is kind of scratchy and it's and it's bent so let's turn solo off Well, I'm kind of excited to try the, the the headphone jack but before I do that let's just check this channel see if we got there's uh, trouble mid best I could tell the EQ is working on that channel so we have a working board here I will have to go through and check everything uh, while we're still in the video I want to check the other channels so I'll set this here we'll go to the next channel so like the other channel the fader is scratchy EQ seems to be working so this channel is actually good the faders can be clean 
this is uh, overloading, so the gain's probably up. So I'll turn the gain down. Try panning. Right, left, that's working. Excellent. Looks like we've got the ability to set that. Four working channels, I mean, that's enough to be used as a mixer. Yeah, the best I can tell is that everything is working properly. So we don't have any major uh, failures here. We have a lot of things that need to be cleaned, um, including all of these pots here. but. Functionally, everything that I've tested is working. I will go through and test all the various auxes and things like that, but I don't need to do that on camera. But I have verified that we've got basic functionality of all the faders. We had a few that were needed a little exercising. Same thing with the gain knobs. I will then think about it. I think that the electronics of this one is certainly better than in the other one. And of course, I've got this damage back here. So this plate, I can get off the other one. The rotopod, I can get off the other one. And then get one good working mixer put together. Then I could decide if I want to try to repair what's left of it. Straighten this out. I could probably put the other thing back together. If I could straighten that out and replace some of the faders on the other one, if it's even worth doing. But Anyway, I'm very pleased with this. It was fun to do this on camera, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Probably in part two, we'll cover a little bit more of getting this all transferred to the other hardware, and then seeing if we can come up with a good mixer. And that in the process, I need to take all the knobs off and clean them, and then clean all of the faders. There's also, obviously, there's some, this thing's, these aren't aligned. It's possible that the faders from the other one might be in a little better shape, but the knobs and the these buttons look good on here. I think that'll clean up quite nicely. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.